How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to continue our Palo Alto series by taking a look at our next topic, which is going to be SourceNet. Now, for those of you that come from the Cisco world on a Cisco router, this is no different than creating, defining the interfaces that you want to participate in NAT, so NAT outside, NAT inside, creating an access list to match on the source of where the traffic is coming from with a standard ACL, and then calling that ACL from the global process the IP net inside source list. Palo Alto does it a little bit differently and they call it a source based NAT because you are basically saying, for example, with Windows 10-1, when he wants to go out to the internet because Windows 10-1 will be able to actually do this, we'll actually show this here in just a minute, where we're going to say traffic from the inside zone to the outside zone, we're going to allow that traffic to be nat -hid. So it's the process is actually very, very straightforward. But unlike a router and even like an ASA, you need to actually explicitly permit the traffic. So first, th the first thing you need to do is create a NAT statement underneath the policies tab. Then you need to create a security policy to allow the traffic to flow through the firewall. And that's what we're going to actually walk through the process of doing. When I say source NAT, I'm referring to traffic that originates from the inside or the trusted portion of the network to the outside. So users that are trying to reach the internet. Keep that in mind, you'll be in good shape. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the firewall and I'm going to log in with the credentials there. And we're going to log in again. For some reason, it take care of that real quick. So we're going to create a couple, uh, a single NAT entry. So we're going to do from the inside to the outside and go through all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and give that a second to load up. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way. Close that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here on policies. And the first one we're going to create is going to be a NAT policy. The NAT policy, I'm going to, by default, there isn't one that exists. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add. And then we're going to call this internet NAT. We've done that. We're going to say the NAT type is IPv4. We could specify IPv6 would be like, but we're not going to. The original packet, so this is going to be the original inside connectivity. The source zone will be inside. And then we have to specify where the traffic will be going to. Okay, so the, we're going to say the destination zone is going to be outside. And the destination interface in this particular case will be Ethernet 1 slash 1. So we're going to pull this down here and we're going to say Ethernet 1 slash 1. Now, if we wanted to, we could define source addresses if we wanted to. So if we wanted to say only the 10.1.10 .10 network or any other particular address range that we want to allow, if that's where that's going, because you might have a very, you, you might have lots and lots of subnets that are being learned through dynamic routing from these different particular areas. And if that's the case, then you would want to mitigate which particular subnets you don't want to reach the internet. Not everything in the enterprise environment needs to have internet access. So keep that in mind if you are looking at a deployment. But right now, we are going to say any traffic from the inside zone to the outside zone, if, and the traffic will be going out the ethernet one slash one interface towards the internet. So that's the original packet. And we're basically saying anything. We could be very specific if we wanted to be, but we're not going to say that. We're basically going to say whatever traffic is sourced is going to be sent. Now, the translated packet, where we want to do this, it's going to be a source address translation. Again, we're focusing on the inside traffic. So we don't want to mess around with a destination address translation, right? We want to make sure we specify source because that's where the traffic will be coming from, is from the inside where we're modifying the source IP from 10.1.10 .10 over to a 101 IP. So what I'm going to do is the translation type is there's a couple of them. You have static, which is going to be a one to one mapping. So for example, you could map an internal IP address of 192.168. Actually, let me whiteboard this little piece out because this can be a little tricky to, to follow. So the static IP here, Static means that you're going to do a static mapping from, 
let's say 192.168.21.63 to 101.0.0.63, for example. Regardless of what happens, this communication going back and forth will always be on. So this is a static entry in the NAT table. It's always going to be there. So if traffic come from the outside hits this IP, it's going to be sent to this direction, to this internal IP. If traffic from this particular IP is going outbound, it'll be NATted over to this particular IP. Okay. You have dynamic IP. This is going to be a. Um, this will be a scenario very similar to that of a, an overlapping address range. So what will end up happening is if you have a 10.1.10.0 slash 27, you're going to map this to a 101.0.0.0 slash 27 range. And you're going to say dot zero well, you could use dot zero, but in most cases you're not going to. We'll say from one through thirty one. Well, actually, we'll say thirty, and over here it'll be one through thirty for the last i for the IP addresses. It'll be an overlapping mapping, right? So you'll have communication going back and forth, and you'll open up IPs and go that route. So it's basically it's a dynamic allocation. The last one of dynamic IP and port will basically be the concept of port address translation, where you're saying, I'm going to map everything from a 10.1.10.0 slash 24 over to 101.0.0.10. And you're going to map everything over there, and you're going to be using TCP and UDP port numbers to basically generate new sessions. And this is the one we're gonna be dealing with right here. At least for right now, then we'll deal with the static NAT, static source NAT, then we'll deal with the destination-based NAT, and go from there. That's, that's how all this stuff comes into play. Pretty straightforward stuff, but we're gonna be dealing with this guy right here. We're gonna choose this and it asks, what is gonna be the translated address? Right now, we're actually gonna come down here to interface address. The interface address that we're going to choose is going to be Ethernet 1 slash 1. And if we hit the drop down, it's going to map to this IP. Again, this is basically saying anything from 10, anything from the original packet. So in this case, you're 10.1.10. Although we're not isolating it down to that, there's only one subnet. Now, when we go a little bit further along and we start to add in more and more connections on the back end, so we'll add in loopback addresses on these routers when we get to dynamic routing. Or no, we're, we haven't gotten to that part yet. But when we get to more complicated designs with natting and allowing traffic to go back and forth, we'll add in those things and you'll see multiple subnets coming in from a particular interface. That's where on the original packet, defining where the source is coming from will be important because then you might actually have to dictate what those are because uh, there might not always be the case where the server might not always be physically connected to the firewall you might be using dynamic routing where the server might be five, six hops away from the firewall and it buried in the DMZ somewhere and you need to allow communication from the outside to the DMZ server and that's gonna be one of those things you'd have to take a look at. So just keep that in mind. So that's basically where we're going. Destination address translation, we're not messing with that. We're gonna click on OK. So this is going to provide us the port address translation. So if we look through here, this is and we'll see how this all comes into play and all that good stuff. So I'm actually going to click here, columns, and I'm going to uncheck tags. I'm going to uncheck modified and created, and we're going to get rid of the original packet service, because we don't care about that. The translated packet translation, we can keep that. So we should be good to go there. We'll be able to scroll back and forth. The next thing that I want to go do is I need to go over here to the security policy. And I need to create a new policy. I'm going to call this Internet NAT. And 
in this case here, I'm also going to say policy. It's going to be an interzone policy. The source zone will be inside, and the destination zone will be outside. The application we're going to say is whatever, service is going to be whatever, action is going to be allow, and we're going to click on OK. And that's basically what we're doing. We're basically saying allow any traffic from the inside zone to the outside zone. We don't care the address. We don't care the user. We're going to just allow it to come through and be translated over, and everything should work just fine. So you can see that that com comes down here. We could always put this at higher up if we wanted to and go that route. So let's go ahead and actually do that. We're going to scoot this guy to the very top. So now he is at the very top of the list. And then more specific routes. Technically speaking, because this is going to be an inside to outside, traffic from the inside to the DMZ or traffic from the inside to somewhere else in the network that's internal wouldn't even touch this one. They would be bypassed to process ID to, or sequence number two or four or what have you. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to come in here on this particular, the test one. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Yes, because we don't need to have it there. I'm going to go ahead and commit that config. I'm going to commit it again. And I'm going to pause the video until the process has been completed. All right, so our policy has been applied. I'm going to go ahead and close that out go back to the monitor session tab. And uh, we're going to go ahead and open up Win 10-1 again. Go ahead and pull this guy up. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way. And we're going to close this guy out for the time being. And what, now you'll notice that the internet connection still says that it's down. There's no internet, no internet access. Um, but if we do an IP config, we have IP address information, right? If we ping uh, quad eight, but we can't ping Google, right? Or I'm sorry, we can't ping the IP address of the firewall because it'll drop it. I'm gonna go ahead and ping it, and that should allow me to go out to the internet. And I don't know if you notice this, but uh, as time has progressed, it's allowed it to go out. So I'm gonna come back over here to this guy, and now we have all kinds of communication going outbound. So now it says Windows licensed for valid, or Windows license is valid for 90 days. And our ping to quad eight works, so we should be able to ping google.com and that should work as well. So we're able to do DNS resolution, which is a great thing. So I should be able to pull up Internet X or uh, Microsoft Edge, and I should be able to point to google.com. Give that a couple seconds to launch and all that good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and close out the Windows firewall because I don't need that there. I'm going to click in here and google.com and give that a couple seconds to do its thing. And it should be trying to go out to Google. Let's go ahead and bring this guy over so we can see it better. And we're going to resync it up. And we can see web browsing is kicked in, so that's going inside to outside. Everything looks good there. Come over here to the Policies tab on the Security Policy. If we scroll across here, we can see that there's... It's going to take a little bit of time for it to actually happen, but you'll start to see a bunch of hit counts starting to work. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We have Google pulled up on our web page on our PC behind the... Palo Alto Firewall. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you go about doing a source NAT configuration. You first need to create the NAT entry, and then you need to create the security policy that allows the traffic. That's pretty much it for source NAT. We're going to take a look at a static NAT as well for that and go through those details as well. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.